What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Life After Lockup Season 5, Episode 16, Pizza of My Heart. We're going to talk about seven couples. Seven couples in this video. Seven couples who are doing much of nothing. So this is going to be really hard, but let's get into it. Let's start off with Join Nami and Red. So Join Nami and Red. Joy's brother Micah comes over to meet Red for the very first time. So when he gets there, um, he takes Red outside to have, you know, a man to man conversation. And Micah centers the whole conversation around his nephew Sway. And he tells Red that, you know, when I saw Sway the other day, um, he kept on telling me, I have a daddy now. I have a daddy now. So basically, Micah is telling Red, don't mess this up for my nephew because he already sees you as his father. And, you know, there's already that attachment there on the part of the little boy. So don't go mess this up for the sake of my nephew um you enjoy y'all do whatever the hell y'all want to do but my nephew now is involved so all I care about is protecting him and protecting his heart so red says oh I'm gonna be there you know I see him as my son and you know I'm always gonna be there for him that's my boy that's my son and even though he's trying to talk a really good game uh Micah is not buying it Micah is hearing him, listening to him, but he's not really feeling any type of genuineness or sincerity coming from the words that Red is saying. Moving on from there, Red and Joy, they go out to eat. So Red brings up, actually, it was Joy that brought up, you know, if he misses home and if he wants to go back home. And Red said, yes, he does want to go home. And then Joy says, do you want to go back home to Missouri to live or, you know, like just to visit? And he says, I just want to visit. He said, in fact, you know, my sister, um, I don't know if he said my sister booked a flight for me or my sister is thinking about booking a flight for me. But he mentions his sister planning on getting him a ticket to come back home to Missouri. So then Joy asks, what about me and sway <laughs> and i'm like oh, what about you and sway <laughs> i mean you really did not think that this man <laughs> was going to have his sister pay for a ticket for you and your son or maybe joy thought she was going to buy her own ticket and buy the ticket for her son but she just wanted to be invited to missouri so he says something about how you know he was just gonna go home real quick you know for a little visit and you know no big deal and basically letting her know well there really wasn't any plan oh he tells her because you have work he says you have to go to work i don't know if she's in school as well he says you know you got work and you know all this other stuff going on here so yeah it's just gonna be me and so she was like well you know you're always thinking about yourself you never include you know me in your plans it's always uh it's just about you he gets upset because of, of the fact that this conversation is about to turn into an argument argument so he gets up and he leaves and he steps outside the restaurant and he gets on the phone and he starts talking to somebody which is what he always does after that the next day when we see joy and red they're in the middle of an argument so they're they are in um i guess in their bedroom with the door closed where we can hear them and they're arguing and the argument is about him messaging other girls specifically one particular girl now, they didn't say the name of that particular girl that she was accusing him of messaging um but i'm assuming it could have been julie but I'm not 100% sure because we heard her tell Red, I asked you over and over again if you were messaging that particular person and you told me no, but then you told me yes, you were. So, you know, I want you to stop talking to other girls. Why do you have to talk to other girls? And so his solution is if I'm making you so unhappy, then let me go back to Missouri. He said it. He's like, if I'm making you that unhappy, let me just go back to Missouri. So, you know, Red to me, he's um, his game is old. It's tired. It's um, a very old fashioned type of game that men like him play. You know, you start an argument, you get your girl all upset and either you find you use that as an excuse to leave, to walk away or whatever under the guise of, you know, let me just step away for a little bit because I'm not making you happy. I'm making you so upset. So let me make you feel better. Let me remove my from this situation and this is your excuse just to go out and you know hump around so he steps outside again outside of the trailer 
and you know she's crying and she's boohooing and um what did he say i forgot what he said when he was out there but he called somebody he called another one of his female bffs so it's not just julie it's somebody else so he's talking to this other person um while he's outside and he's telling her you know things are not going really well over here with joy i just want to go back home to missouri she doesn't trust me um i can't even have female friends i can't even have female friends and it's like no you can't because you don't know how to not sleep with your female friends we saw you and julie that was your home girl your bff your road dog and you slept with her so no a person like you cannot have female friends so he's complaining about joy and her insecurities and all of this and he's feeling you know like really like you know controlled and contained in this relationship so he goes back inside he gets on his video game I'm like, Joy, what are you doing? What are you doing with this guy? It's not even about him being in prison anymore because Louis was also in prison. I think he was in prison longer than Red was. But then Louis, to me, even though he's still trying to like get his footing together, Louis, to me, seems a little bit more mature, a little bit more put together than Red because when Red came back inside the trailer, he got back on the video game. So he's back on the video game. His pants are practically down to his knees. Why are you even wearing pants? I, 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 look, I'm going to sound like a grandmother, like an old bitty. So I'm not even going to complain about the pants. It is what it is. That's what the kids are doing today, whatever. But it's like his pants are so low. And we're seeing his whole entire backside. Like what, why do you even bother wearing pants? Why don't you just go outside in your underwear? I don't understand. Anyways, so... When he comes back inside, Joy wants to continue the conversation, you know, of him messaging other girls, so on and so forth. And he doesn't want to talk about it. He's like, can we just not talk about it? But she's not going to let it go because she wants answers. So um, when he comes up, so she, uh, she talks about all the stuff that she did for him. You know, I, I've done so much for you and, you know, um, I went all out for you while you were in prison. And Red says, I hate it when people talk about how much they've done for somebody. You know, you're talking about how much money you spent on me and all the things that you've done for me. And she says, because I did do a lot for you. She says, I did do a lot for you. I made sure that you had a place to live in when you came out of prison. And then he says, well, I did a lot for you too. And she goes, what did you do for me? And I was like, I was on, I was like, yeah, what did, well, I missed that. What did you do for her? And he says, um, I did something to make you stay. I chose you. And I was just like, joy, joy. Are you this dumb? Are you this dumb joy? You're raising a whole human. You're raising your son to become a man. And you're going to put up with this. He said, I did something to make you stay and I chose you as if being chosen by red is just like, it's just going to make life worth living. And it's just going to make perfect sense. And you know, everything that I've ever lived for, everything that I was working towards comes down to this moment where I got chosen by red. So he says, well, I, you know, I, I mean, I did something to make you stay and I chose you. And so then he gets up. And he walks over to her and he like aggressively hugs her and kisses her. And he says something like, you know what? I'm going to love on you right now. And he does this obviously to like distract her or to uh, manipulate her into like not being mad at him anymore and accepting him and all this BS. And I mean, a word on the curb was that they have broken up in real life. And I hope to God that they did. But this man doesn't care about joy. This man doesn't care about sway. This man only cares about his own gratification and who can take care of him and who can, who can he use for his benefit? That's all he cares about. He doesn't have anything. He doesn't have anything in his heart, um, to make him love anybody other than himself. Um, I don't know if this is what you call narcissism. I have no idea, but it's all about red and what red wants. And it's all about him. And the fact that joy would bring this person into her child's life when he could care less. Oh, and I forgot to mention when he was outside talking to his BFF, his other BFF, um, he says to her, yeah. And she slept with three men on me. 
he will always use that. That's why I'm like, Joy, you should never have told him that. You know, you should you should just never have told him that. So he will always use that against her. You know, and you know, you were out with other men and you slept with three other men. He will never let that go. He will always keep that in his back pocket to use as his um his weapon of choice when it comes to making her feel bad because she wants him to be accountable and she wants him to be responsible and she wants him to follow through with all the promises that he made. He's always going to pull that out. He didn't pull it out on her. He was talking to his friend when he said that, but it's, there's going to come a time when he's going to throw that in her face and she's not going to like it. So moving on from there, we're going to move on to our next dysfunctional couple, which is Michael and Justine. Um, Michael and Justine as a couple, they're great as a couple. They are fantastic. And I've said this before, um, the last season that they were on TV as a couple, they're fantastic. They're all about each other. They're really into each other, but what they do to the people around them, that's where they fall short. So everybody's out, the whole entire family's together, Michael, Justine, and all of their children, they're playing pool. And Michael's oldest daughter pulls him to the side and she's asking him about Vegas because um, Justine's oldest daughter had revealed to uh, Michael's oldest daughter that they were all gonna be moving to Vegas, all being Michael, Justine, Justine's kids, and Michael's uh, one of Michael's sons. So so she confronts her father about this and Michael explains why they're moving. He says, it's just more lucrative for me to live in Las Vegas. And so the daughter says it would have been great if they could all live in the same state. The girl isn't even asking to live with him. She just wants her father to live in the same state as her. And he can't even do that. Michael says that he had meant to tell them himself. He had meant to tell her himself. And um, there was a way that he was going to explain it to her. But then he tells her, just don't tell the younger kids because, you know, we just have our own way of explaining why we're doing what we're doing and the girl starts to cry because she tells her dad you know you should have came and just told me yourself I don't want to have to hear this from somebody else now Michael did intend to tell her um Justine's daughter beat him to it he did intend to tell her himself um and he had his own way of explaining of telling his kids but you know Justine's daughter whatever so she was crying and he was wiping her tears and she said that you know me and my father have a lot of time to make up for when he was gone and it's just it it breaks my heart to see how his kids are being affected by him not being present in their lives the way that they want him to be. And he has these very little kids. He's got six year old twins and who really don't know him. And I'm just like, Michael, I don't, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being on my soapbox about Michael and you know how he is as a father to his own biological children. I'm sick and tired of talking about it because I'm like turning blue in the face. So it is what it is. He's not going to stay anywhere near his children. He's about to go to Las Vegas and it is what it is. Let's move on to the gender reveal. So, um, at the gender reveal, reveal, Justine tells Michael's sister that the mother, Michael's mom had presented her with a DNA test at the dinner. And she was really embarrassed by that. And the sister was like, I feel you. My mom was really wrong for that. So the sister and Justine look like they have really come a long way because they did not like each other in the beginning. When Michael first came out, they were not feeling each other at all but they have definitely come a long way I think because the sister understands this is the man I mean, excuse me this is the woman that my brother chose to be with it is what it is it's not going to change they're married they're cemented they're solidified so I can't change it I'm just might as well just accept it and be happy for him so Justine and the sister are getting along great and the sister even goes as far as to tell Justine look when my mom comes I'm gonna let her know that what she did was wrong so the mother shows up and the, the sister makes a beeline to her mom and she tells her mom look um, Justine told me that you presented her with a DNA test that was really foul you can't do that mom you know you can't interfere in the relationship like that you're making her feel some kind of way and this is your son's wife and she's pregnant and you're doing all this DNA stuff it's just not cool so you're gonna have to apologize to both of them so the mother does she listens to her daughter and she goes straight to Justina Michael and she says you know what I didn't mean it like that I didn't want to make you feel negative about it or anything uh, I'm sorry and she apologized and it wasn't one of those weak apologies like I'm sorry but I've been through whatever with my brother she was just like I'm 
I'm sorry and left it at that. So her and Justine hug it. I think they left it at that. I don't know. So her and Justine, you know, they hug it out. She hugs it out with her son. And now it's time for the gender reveal party. So they do this thing where these two characters come out, one in pink, one in blue. They do this play fighting thing. And the one that wins the fight is the gender of the baby. And um, pink won the fight. So they're going to have a baby girl. So this was a really cute little segment for them okay i want to keep it positive because i'm always dragging michael and justine so let me just keep it right there they're having a girl congratulations i don't want to put a lot of negativity um on the revelation of their baby's gender so let's just move on uh to the next dysfunctional couple which is Louis and melissa so louis probation or his parole actually allowed him to leave um was it Georgia, Alabama? I don't know, but he's on his way to New Jersey. So um, his probation or his parole allowed him to move outside of, outside of uh, I think it was Georgia, outside of Georgia to go finish off his parole in New Jersey because he's going to be living with Melissa there. So he's at his place of employment, which is a pizzeria. And his boss is like, you know, I'm really worried about you. And I think... Um, the boss probably thinks that he's going to be so stressed out with Melissa, he's probably going to go back to using drugs. And maybe his mother and working at the pizzeria and being close to his best friend kind of keeps Louie grounded. So the mom, you know how she is, you know, Donna's grieving about her son leaving. She's acting like the boy is dying and he's just moving to New Jersey. And, you know, Donna's from New Jersey. She's got family up there. So it's not like he's moving to China or something. He's just moving to New Jersey. You can come see him anytime you want. So Louie's packing up. And Melissa calls his mother. And the plan is, is for Louie to drive himself to New Jersey. And of course, Melissa was trying to tell Louie, what if he gets stopped? And you, what if the cops stop you? And I'm thinking to myself, okay, girl, you wanted him to be independent. You wanted him to be more manly and not be so dependent on his mother. He's going to drive himself to New Jersey and you're not happy with that because he might get stopped by the police. What is he doing wrong? If he gets stopped by the police, what is he doing wrong? If he's, I mean, obviously you're doing something wrong if the police stop you. But what I'm trying to say is like, what's the problem? <laughs> what's the problem he can be stopped by the cops going from his house to the store like what are you so worried about so she wants the mother to drive him to New Jersey so she calls Donna and Donna she's more than happy to do it because it's more time with her son and then whatever so Donna's happy to do it but Louis is not he's like what do y'all why am I I don't understand and he tells Melissa you wanted me to be more independent what's the problem and Melissa's real issue is that he's going to be on his own for 14 hours and nobody's going to have any eyes on him so she's probably worried about him I don't know cheating or being I don't know calling some girl from his past calling calling the salsa girl, calling the uh, dental assistance girl. I, I don't know what she's worried about, but she's worried about him, I guess, not being faithful. I think that's her real issue. And so Louis, I feel bad for Louis because Melissa and Donna are really much one of the same. They both want to control the hell out of Louis. And they're exactly the same. Melissa thinks that she is so different from Donna and that she's so much better than Donna. But Melissa, you're just like his mother. You want to control him. You are so controlling to the point where you from New Jersey, you want someone to ride with him as he's driving to uh, New Jersey. Like you don't even trust him driving. Girl, you're controlling and you're insecure and you're jealous and it's sad and it's pathetic. And I just feel really bad for Louis. I feel so bad for Louis because... Everywhere he turns, it's some crazy hyena, you know, trying to control his life. He can't make any decision on his own. He can't do anything on his own um, between Donna and Melissa. It's like, anyways, Louis, I feel bad for you. I see that you're trying. Um, I'm saying this, right? And it's probably going to be somebody in my comments like, oh, Louis is a horrible person because we just found out that he did this and this. Because every time I say something really good about somebody, one of these reality TV shows, somebody in my comments were like, oh, that person is really horrible because they're scamming or, you know, they did this to that person or whatever. So from what I can see from my television set, from the episode that I saw today, <laughs> I'm really more on Louis' side and I need these two women to just chill out and relax and leave him alone. Moving on to Sean and Sarah. Y'all, y'all don't understand how disappointed I was to have to see Sean and Sarah again. What more do we have to say about Sean and Sarah? 
Sarah is highly insecure about her body. Sean is still neglecting his children. What the hell has changed? What are we doing? Why are we watching these people again? Sean and Sarah are out to eat and Sarah announces to Sean that she's finally done with her parole. So she's like a hundred percent a free woman now. So now she can travel, uh, you know, they can do traveling or they can travel to different places. And she says, well, she wants to go to Mexico because she wants more plastic surgery. She's already had her boobs done and she's already had a tummy tuck and now she wants a BBL. So Sean the supportive husband that he is says to her, do you want to get more surgeries because you want doctors to give you more prescriptions, more pain, uh, pain prescription, pain medication. So you're thinking that your wife wants to go through unnecessary pain. She wants to cause pain so that you can get on pain medication because you think that she's still an addict. And this is her way to get her, her addiction to feed her addiction is by going through surgical procedure in order to get pain medicine. So she denies that. She's like, absolutely not. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm pretty sure that if you want to get uh, pain medicine, I think there's a lot easier, um, <laughs> easier ways to do it where you're not putting your whole life at risk on a surgical table and they're cutting you open. I think there's other ways to get, you can get it off the street. You can go to Mexico to get some, <laughs> you can tell the doctor you have a migraine. You can go to those little, um, very suspicious little clinics that are popping up all over the place. And you don't have to have your body cut wide open in order to get some pain medicine. That was just a really awful thing for him to say. But Sarah says she's really uh, insecure about her body after she had her second baby. And so she wants to tighten up. Sean and Sarah go to Sarah's mother's house to get the kids. Now, Sean refuses to get out of the car to go inside his mother-in-law's house because he's still mad at his mother-in-law for helping Sarah lie um, whenever Sarah will go see the her oldest daughter's father, Anthony. So last season... Um, Sarah was spending time, not spending time, but she went to go see, or she was seeing her oldest daughter's father in order for her daughter and her father to start forming a relationship. And she was doing all of this behind Sean's back and her mother was lying for her. So when Sean found out what was going on, he was really upset with Sarah. He was upset with the mother as well, but he ended up forgiving Sarah, but he never forgave the mother. So he doesn't even want to go inside her house, um, to get his kids. And Sarah just had surgery and she can't even pick up her baby. So it's like, he won't even help her go inside just to pick up the baby. It is, he's awful. Sean is just awful. So while he's waiting for Sarah to come out, his ex calls him, the mother of his children, the mother of his six children calls him and she wants money. And he tells her, I don't have any money, but I'll do the best that I can. I can't take this. I can't take this. I can't. I have no interest in Sean and Sarah. I, I don't care um, about him not taking care of his six kids. Sean, to me, there's like very little redeeming qualities about Sean. Um, the, how he did his ex, you know, you leave her with six kids to go run around and chase prison inmates. And he had that other girl, I forgot her name. He was chasing her down until she put him in his place and he couldn't take her anymore. And now, you know, he got himself hitched up to Sarah and, you know, had a baby with Sarah. And I don't like Sean. I don't like Sean. I don't like anything about Sean. I hate his Hitler mustache. I don't like Sean. And I can't believe that I'm going to be subjected to watching an entire season of Sean and Sarah. Sarah's fine. I can take her or leave her. It really doesn't matter to me. I just cannot take Sean and love after lockup or life after lock lockup. Y'all did me so wrong and so dirty by bringing this couple back. Moving on to Blaine and Lindsay. So Lindsay, you know, she's running around collecting money from people that owe her money because she has to pay her, her attorney $20,000. So she's running around all over the place. Her first uh, debtor, um, ends up paying her. I think he paid her $500. So she's got $500 down and she still needs to collect, um, what is it? 19,500 moving on from there. Lindsay wants to propose to Blaine. So she's at the jewelry store trying to find a necklace for him to propose with. And she says she wants to propose to Blaine, you know, whatever she loves them, wants to spend the rest of her life with them. But also if she ends up going back to prison for her pending charges, um, It'll be easier for him to come visit her because he'll be like at the top of the list because he'll be her spouse. And also, if anything, if she has to go back to prison, she wants Blaine to look after her daughter, Miley Grace. 
first of all, Lindsay's not going back to prison. I don't know why they keep, you know, making us think that there's this possible. She's not going to go back. Lindsay's not going back to prison. If she does go back to prison, it's not going to be for no 40 years for real. So I understand they don't have much, they don't have much of a storyline. So they're going to put 20 on 10 on this whole 40 year prison thing. I know for a fact that Lindsay is not going to be serving 40 years in prison, but if she does go to prison, she wants Blaine to be in charge of Molly Grace. That's not going to happen. If she goes to prison, Molly Grace is going back to the grandmother. Molly Grace is not staying there to live with Blaine. Moving on from there. Remember, Blaine said he's not ready to marry Lindsay for a plethora of reasons. He's not ready to get married. So um, it's going to be real interesting to see on whether or not he accepts her proposal. That's all I have to say about them. Brittany and K-Rock. Okay, look, K-Rock, uh, my little uh, cupcake. K-Rock, I understand you're worried about your brother. I get it. That's not why I'm watching Life After Lockup. I'm not watching Life After Lockup to watch your brother and him going through his addictions and anxiety and PTSD. I'm not, that's not why I'm watching this. Y'all get yourselves a little uh, spinoff, um, K-Rock and the fam or whatever you want to call it. But I'm not watching Life After Lockup for this. Um, Brittany, we didn't see her at all last week. She barely said two sentences this week. I'm sorry. I'm concerned about your brother. I hope your brother is going to, you know, hope he finds the path to recovery. I hope he does well. I'm going to pray for him, but I'm not watching an hour and a half show to see what's going on with your damn brother. The brother comes back home, um, like Lottie die, like nothing's going on. Like they weren't about to send out a whole search party looking for him because they had no idea where he was. K-Rock tried to call him. He hung up on him. And then he comes walking in the door like nothing's happened. He sits down and starts having dinner with everybody like nothing's happened. The mother's like, you know, we were so worried to death about you and, you know, blah, blah, blah. The mother asks him, are you back on drugs? Are you drinking? He's like, no, I'm not. And then the mother, she's so like emotional about it. She gets up and she walks away. The brother says, I don't know what's wrong with her. Um, she's not my wife, so I need her to get off my back. He goes outside. K-Rock follows him he's upset with his parents like all of his problems he's blaming on his parents and K-Rock is trying to tell him that you know we're better than this and you know we got plans we got goals we got to stay focused so on and so forth I don't care I don't care I don't care I want to know are you and Lindsay gonna have a baby are you are you and Brittany gonna have a baby or not that's what I want to know I don't really care about the brother. I wish him well, but I don't care. Eris and Cameron. When we see Eris and Cameron, it's still real salty between them after they have that big old fight because Eris is really upset that Cameron is spending all this money on video shoots and big booty girls um, instead of sp spending money on their house because you know, they, they got to find a place to live. So the next day, things are still kind of tense between them. Cameron apologizes. Then he says, I have a surprise for you. The surprise was the maternity shoot. I ain't got nothing else to say. So they took some pictures of the damn maternity shoot. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video if you like this content. Subscribe to my channel. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this was a horrible, horrible recap. But it is what it is. And I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.